we're going to look at fitting an RP3 automatic draft excluder to the bottom of this door. In the packet is the RP3 itself and the fixing screws and the little cam that will actually actuate the RP3 and make it seal. Step one is to measure across the front of the door at the bottom and then we're going to deduct four millimetres and cut the RP3 to size. That's 812 minus four means we're going to cut this to 808 millimetres in length. Let's go and do that now. Okay, now we've cut the RP3 to size. Now we'll just check, yep, that looks pretty right. Now to cut the RP3 to size, you actually have to make two cuts, not one. The reason for that is to wind, have the label in the middle when you're finished. So our measurement across the door was 812 millimetres, minus the four makes 808. So from the middle, we've measured back this way, 404 and cut. And then from this side, we've measured 808 along that way and cut. Now I've cut this on a drop saw, but at home, you might have a miter box and a hacksaw for doing that job. That's fine. Make sure you've got a new blade in the hacksaw and that the miter box is good. Now the next thing is to mark on each side of the door where the top of the RP3 is going to be. Let's do that now. We want to mark on the latch side, so that is where the, the key or the, the door handle is. We want to mark up 40 millimetres and put a little pencil mark. And on the hinge side, we want a little bit less. We want 38 millimetres. The reason for that is, so, so it's going to be tilted ever so slightly. The reason for that is that it comes down, it's pushed down from the latch side, and there is a little bit of twist available on this device and so having it down a little bit on the hinge side means that when that's driven down it actually comes down beautifully and straight on the doorstep. So this is the latch side, so it's 40 millimetres. And now we're going to do the hinge side, so that's 38 millimetres. So we put the RP3 in place, we'll push it hard up into the hinge side and then ever so slightly back a bit so that it's not jammed up hard on the hinge side. So the next thing to do is to pile it. Underneath. and fit one of the screws. And then do the same at the other end. Okay, and just make sure that it goes up and down nicely, which it does. So now we'll fit the rest of the screws and then finally we'll fit the cam. It's good practice to pilot for all the screws. We're fitting fairly close to the bottom of a door and so um, piloting means that there's less chance of the screw breaking out through the bottom of the door. The next step and the final step is to fit the actuating cam. Now that fits on the latch side. So it's got the longest screw. So if you push down the RP3 so that it fits nicely on the step, then you can push the cam. The way to fit this is to have the cam like that so it's in mid position. Hold that and then put it against the RP3 and use the screw point to make, make a mark on the door jam and that's where we're going to pile it and then screw that in. 
So we finished fitting the RP3. How do you know if it's working correctly? So the door should be pretty easy to shut. And when it does shut, that blade should just come down evenly along the doorstep. If it comes down too hard, then you can back off the cam a little bit. Just turn it a little bit anti-clockwise and tighten up the screw again and have a look. Okay, so this looks like it's, uh, it's pretty right here. All right, so if the cam is too loose, then you might have a gap under here, in which case turn the cam clockwise and tighten up the screw again and try the door another time.